Uh, and for today's webinar, we're going to be focusing on modeling businesses in Right Capital. So for those of you who might be a little bit newer to Right Capital, you are able to enter businesses as assets into a client's uh, financial plan. So for those clients that are business owners, you're able to account for things like the value of that business on the client's current balance sheet, as well as future growth on that value, business income and distributions that might impact a client's taxes and cash flows, and of course, you know, the eventual sale of those business assets within the plan projections as well. So we're going to be diving into all of that and more today. Uh, but before we pivot into Right Capital here, I do just want to take a quick look at our agenda. So you know, as I mentioned, we're going to start by reviewing the data entry process for business assets within a client plan. Uh, once we have that business entered, we're then going to take a look at the cash flow impact, as well as the tax impact that those business entries will have on the client's plan as a whole. We're then going to take a look at modeling future business purchases for clients who, you know, maybe don't own a business today, but plan to purchase one in the future. And then we're going to pivot into the retirement analysis area and take a look at some um, you know, proposal comparisons that you can set up related to business purchases, um, potentially selling businesses at different times to fund cash flow needs, uh, and so on. As always, we will be doing a live Q&A at the end of the presentation here today, so if you do find yourself with any questions at all as we're making our way through each of these items, do feel free to write in using the Q&A field within the Zoom control panel on your screen. Uh, I think I have about 40 minutes of prepared content for you here today, and then I will be sticking around to answer as many of your questions as I can until we get to the top of the hour today. All right, that being said, allow me to quickly switch screens over to my Right Capital login here, and we can dive in. Perfect. So here we have our case study for today's presentation. We're going to be looking at a joint plan today for Sadie and Sam Green. And to start things off here today, we're going to pivot into the profile net worth section. So for those of you who maybe are a little bit newer, the net worth area is where all of a client's current assets and liabilities are entered along with their you know, current balances. So by default, this is also the fourth step of the initial data entry process for new clients, but you can also you know, find it here within the profile for existing clients. So let's say we're working with you know, clients who own a business and we want to add that business as an asset here within the net worth section and incorporate that into their right capital financial plan. Um, that can be accomplished by clicking the add account button in the upper right and then selecting the other option here. So we're adding and other asset to this client's plan. And in particular, when it comes to businesses, when you click into the asset type field here, you'll find a few different options for you know, a number of different business types. So you know, limited liability companies, partnerships, uh, S-Corps and C-Corps are available to be added here. So we can choose our business type here, let's say for now an LLC. And this is going to expand the data entry drawer to allow us to build in all of the necessary information for this business. So for the next, uh, you know, I'd say 10 minutes or so, everyone, we're going to be walking through the process of entering a business as an asset here in Right Capital. And my goal is to make sure that you know, we're all as comfortable and confident as possible in mapping out you know, these business assets for clients. Um, so to start things off here, let's say that Sadie and Sam maybe own a pizza place. We'll start by entering the name of the asset at the top here. So we'll say SNS Pizza for the name of our business. We can then you know, choose the business type here, which we've selected as LLC. And then we can select the owner of that business, whether that's the client, co-client, or uh, in this case, jointly owned. So pretty straightforward there. We've now determined uh, the name, business type, and owner for our business asset. Next up here, we have the current value, which is both you know, the current value of the business and the additional dollar value that we're going to be building into the client's net worth as a whole here. So uh, you know, maybe based on a recent valuation, Sadie and uh, Sam note that this business is worth, let's say, $600,000. So we can add that current value here. Uh, if we click Save in the lower right here quickly, we'll also see that that is going to be added to the client's total net worth. So we have that current value accounted for uh, there. 
Uh, and then, you know, in addition to the current value, we can then determine future growth on that value using our next two fields here. Uh, and if you're familiar at all with entering things like investment properties or maybe cash value life insurance in Right Capital, you know, we have similar options here when it comes to, uh, you know, the value approach, how we're going to map out the growth on the business value as we project that out into the future. So first we have our simple growth option. This is the, the quick and easy option. It allows you to enter a single linear growth percentage here. So, you know, maybe we want to see this business value grow by, let's say 5% annually. So what we'd see in this case is you know, that 5% growth being applied to the value of the business each and every year of our cash flow projections up until the point where, you know, of course, the clients decide to potentially sell that business within the plan. So uh, that's the first option here. But in addition to simple growth, we also provide you with a second option here, depending on your needs, which is going to be that detailed schedule option. Um, so with this option, you'll find uh, a new button here to open up the detailed schedule here. And you know, this schedule gives you full control over business income, business distributions, and you know, for our purposes here, the business value for each and every year of the uh, you know ca future looking cash flow projections. Um, so I will say that the detailed business schedule is not always necessary for every client, but it can be really valuable you know to have this kind of control if and when you need it. You know, for example, you know there um, you know might be some cases where the clients have a relatively new business and maybe they don't expect to be you know, quite as profitable right away. You know, you can adjust the uh, business value on a yearly basis to you know, have that increase potentially at a slower rate early on, and then you know, maybe pick up some steam at, <laughs> as time goes on here. So you know, that's one example of when you might want to utilize something like this. You know, another example is maybe if you know, potentially clients are planning to do some traveling at some point in their plan, and they're going to close their doors for a year or two and then reopen. You, know, you can entirely eliminate growth on the business value for a year or two and then have that resume. So uh, you know, those are some relatively simple examples, but I do always like to point out that this detailed schedule is here for you if you need it. We are going to keep things simple for now and stick with the simple growth approach, uh, but, you know, we will be re revisiting that detailed schedule in just a few minutes here as well. Uh, for now, moving on to our next two fields here, we have our annual income and our annual distributions, and these are you know, perhaps the most important fields to be extra aware of when entering businesses and right capital. I'd say that this is probably the you know, most common uh, mistake or point of confusion that I tend to see here when it comes to entering businesses and right capital. You know, something really important to keep in mind here is that we do split up annual income and annual distributions from the business into two distinct inputs. And each of these inputs does very different things and are going to have very different impacts on the client's plan. So starting with the annual income here, you know, this is specifically the amount that we will tax the client on. Um, so the most, most important thing to keep in mind when it comes to annual income, this is only going to have an impact on the client's taxes. This is not what we'll actually see within their cash flow projections as an income inflow. So um, definitely keep that in mind when it comes to annual income. Um, and then we have you know, our annual distributions field here, and this is you know the the opposite essentially. This will not have an impact on taxes, but this is what we will see you know, as an income inflow within the plan. So essentially, this is the actual amount that the clients are going to take home from the business. So again, just to reiterate, annual income only impacts the client's taxes. Annual distributions is what will enter the plan as a cash inflow each and every year. So. I will say that in many cases, you know, these values are the same, uh, but you know, not always. There can be a variety of cases for um, you know whatever reason that causes the amount that the clients take home uh, to be you know different than the amounts that they're actually taxed on. So you know we give you the flexibility to account for that, uh, you know, by splitting these inputs apart. And I'm actually going to enter two different values here for these fields, so that uh, you know in just a bit here when we take a closer look at the cash flows and at the sample tax forms within the plan we'll be able to see the differences here between annual income and annual distributions. Um, so we're going to use $100,000 as the taxable business income here, and then $80,000 as the distributions that the clients are taking from the business. So moving on here, our next field is for our income growth. 
This is something that's going to be applied to both the annual income as well as the annual distributions. So you know, in terms of functionality here, relatively similar to the you know, annual growth on the value. You know, how do we want these values, income and distributions, to grow as we project this business out into the future? So again, when it comes to income growth, you can choose between that linear growth percentage using this simple growth option. So you can enter something like 2.5% growth on both of these values. Or again, you, know, you can use that detailed schedule option here if you'd like to you know, customize the growth on both the business income and the business distributions you know, over the course of these projections. So when it comes to the detailed business schedule, you know, I always like to say that one of Right Capital's greatest strengths and one of our core design philosophies as a planning software is, is flexibility. You know, and this is a great example of that in practice. You know, if you're trying to build a plan in 10 minutes or less and you want to keep things as quick and easy as possible, you know, that's where we provide you with that simple growth option. But you know, in those cases where you do need to get into uh, you know, the nitty gritty of customizing the business value, you know, annual income and distributions on a year to year basis, um, that's something you can choose to do as well. So ultimately, whatever your needs are, whatever the needs of your clients are, uh, you can map that out accurately for, for clients. While we're here in the detailed schedule, I do quickly just want to highlight some of the quick fill features in the lower left. These are certainly going to make your life easier you know, as you fill out these schedules for clients. Um, so just to quickly highlight each of these, you know, the clear all button will, you know, as the name suggests, clear all of the fields here. So if you need to start fresh, you can use that to uh, create a blank slate for yourself here. The interpolate option can be used to fill the gaps essentially between two sets of values. So you know, maybe you want to model interpolated growth on the business value, let's say, between 2024 and maybe 2030. And you want that to ramp up from 600 to 700,000. You can use the quick fill option and interpolate the values between you know, those two that you've entered. So that can be used to fill gaps you know, and make your life a lot easier when ent entering these year to year values. And then last but not least, you know, we also have the simple growth uh, option here, which, you know, if you've filled out those other values for the business growth on the value and you know, growth on the income and distributions, it's going to use that information as a starting point for you here. So, um, you know, that's what I've entered here. And then at this point, you can make any adjustments that you'd like to any of these individual values and click save in the lower right to, you know, save those changes. Again, I am going to stick with simple growth here for today, but that business uh, detailed business schedule is certainly very valuable in those situations where you might need to do so. So to wrap things up here for the data entry portion of this presentation, our last few fields here are going to allow us to specify you know, important details related to the eventual sale of the business. Um, so you know, of course we have our cost basis, which is what allows Right Capital to accurately calculate capital gains when the business is sold. So definitely important to enter that cost basis information in this field here. Um, we can of course determine the year of sale when we'd like to see this business sold within the projections. Um, so one thing to keep in mind here is that if you don't want to see that business being sold in the client's cash flow projections, you can use the end of both plans option. That's going to push that sale you know, past the point that we're planning for these clients. So that's the option you'll select in cases where you might not want to see this asset being sold within the projections. But for you know, the situations where you do want to see this asset being sold, you can choose a specific calendar year, you know, a specific client age, or, you know, other milestones like retirement or the end of a client's plan. So we're going to go with um, Sadie's retirement, actually, in this particular case. And then we can take a look at that in just a minute here. You can also choose to enter a cost of sale if you'd like, which will reduce the sale proceeds by the percentage that you enter. And when it comes to the sale option, you have, you have the ability to choose between a lump sum payment in the year that that you know, business is sold or an installment sale. You, know, you can choose the number of years you'd like to see, as well as the interest rate for that installment sale option. So um, again, just to keep things simple here for today, we are going to use the lump sum option, but uh, do be aware that this is here for you if you want to see you know, uh, an installment sale over a certain number of years. Perfect. Uh, so once again, we can click save in the lower right to you know, save our changes. And now that we have this business entered into the client's plan, 
The next thing I want to do here today is take a look at the impact that this will have on both the cash flow projections in the retirement area, as well as on the client's sample tax forms within the tax area. So we're going to start in the cash flows first. So let's dive in here. Uh, as a reminder, you can find the cash flow tables within the retirement cash flows area of each and every client plan. And now that we have that business entered here, we'll be able to see a couple of uh, different things across these different cash flow tables here. Um, starting with the actual value of the business, that's something that can be tracked within the net worth uh, table here in the cash flows. So you will find a dedicated column for business assets. Um, you can always click into this column to see you know, the individual values for you know, one or more businesses potentially as we project those out into the future. Um, this is getting eliminated at the point where this business is being sold, you know, that client's retirement age, which we'll look at in just a minute here. Um, so this is where you can find that business value. Um, if you're looking to track the business distributions over the course of the projections, that's something you can find in the summary table here, specifically in the income inflows column. So uh, we'll be able to find a business income uh, column here in the income inflows area where we can track the uh, distributions that we've entered. And just as a reminder, you know, uh, maybe you'll remember that I did enter 80,000 as the annual distributions as opposed to the annual income of 100,000 for tax purposes. So again, that 80K that I entered for the annual distributions is what we actually see enter the client's cash flows as an income inflow. Uh, and then I did apply some annual growth to that as well. So we see that being applied you know, uh, to the base uh, amount. The next thing we'll look at here is the sale of the business. This is another thing that we can see here in the summary area of the cash flows, in particular, the other inflows section of the cash inflows. So if we click into this area, we can see the sale of this business occurring in 2035 when these clients retire. And we can see you know, the proceeds from that sale entering the plan here. And then if we uh, take another look at the summary table, uh, we can see the remainder of those proceeds after all of our expenses, goals, and taxes are you know, accounted for in that year, we can see the remainder being saved and reinvested into the client's taxable assets within the plan. Something I want to make sure I highlight here as it relates to the sale proceeds being saved and reinvested, um, you may be familiar with a specific setting in Right Capital, the planning method setting. Um, the impact that that's going to have on your plan is essentially whether or not we're going to assume excess cash flows are saved or spent within the cash flow projections here. I currently have it set to save and reinvest you know, all excess cash flows, but I do want to make sure that I highlight, even if you are using the modified cash flow based planning method in the gear icon settings methodology tab here, if, even if you are using the modified option, which is going to assume excess cash flows are spent off, um, Right Capital will still save and reinvest the proceeds from something like a business sale. Um, so I did just change that setting. If we take another look here at the summary table in our cash flows, we can see that you know I am spending off a significant chunk of the cash flow surplus for these clients now. But of course, you know, we are always going to save and reinvest those sale proceeds from things like the sale of a business. And that's true of a couple of different things in Right Capital as well, like the sale of properties, um, you know, stock options will always be saved and reinvested when those are liquidated. So there's a handful of things that will be saved regardless of your planning method, including the um, you know, sale of businesses. So just something to keep in mind there as it relates to uh, that planning method setting here in uh, the methodology area. Great. So the next thing we're going to look at here is the tax module. So we can take a look at some of the tax impact that the you know business will have on the client's plan. So in the cash flows area, you know the the business will have a an indirect impact, I suppose, in terms of you know potentially increasing the tax payments that we see there within the cash flow summary. But if you want to see you know the the impact on the client's sample tax forms, uh, the tax module, tax estimate tab. And then details sub tab is where we're able to take a closer look at you know how how that's going to impact these sample tax forms. Um, so you know just as a reminder for those of you who might not be aware, this is an area that you know allows you to take a look at the sample 1040 as well as you know schedules one through three, schedules A through D, 
throughout every year of our future looking projections. And you know, these forms do pre-populate with information based on everything that you've entered into the client's plan. So these can be a really insightful look into uh, you know how things are feeding into the tax calculations in right capital and you know ultimately uh, the tax figures the federal tax figures that are being calculated and applied within the cash flow projections so when it comes to things like businesses um, you know first and foremost we can see here on line 8 that 100,000 in annual income that we entered into the net worth or that client's business asset and you know, if we wanted to take a closer look at that we could always take a look at the schedule one here, that's something for, you know, for an LLC specifically, we'll see that flow through on line three of the schedule one here. So we can see, you know, even though we only have 80,000 entering the cash flows as an income inflow for those distributions, we have the full 100,000 that we entered into the annual income field, you know, being used for tax purposes. So um, definitely important to keep that in mind here. And you can view all that information within the you know, tax estimate area of the client plan. If we skip ahead to 2035, which is the year that we're actually selling uh, that property, I need to refresh my page here, but we'll be able to see the capital gains being generated by uh, the sale of that property. So if we skip ahead here, we can see you know, on line seven of the 1040 in this case, you know, a significant amount of capital gains being generated on the sale of that business. And again, if you wanted to take a closer look at that, you could always take a look at the Schedule D here, and you'll be able to find you know, more specific information related to those capital gains as well. While we're on the topic of taxes here, I do want to take a quick moment to you know, highlight some of the differences in the ways that income from each business type is going to be taxed within the system. And in order to do that, I actually want to make a quick pivot into the uh, right Capital Help Center you know, and highlight one of the resources that uh, it might be useful to you when it comes to entering business assets into right Capital. So uh, in case you didn't see me do that just now, you can always access the Help Center by clicking the chat bubble in the lower right and then clicking the search our Help Center option. In this case, I want to take a look at the business assets data entry article quickly. And in particular, um, you know, this the taxation of business income chart that we have available here. So, um, you know, depending on the type of business that the client has, the annual income is going to be treated a bit differently from a tax perspective. Um, and you'll see the impact of that both on the tax payments within the cash flow projections, as well as within those sample tax forms that we just looked at in the tax module. And from you know a data entry perspective, the only thing you'll really need to worry about is selecting the correct business type in the net worth section and right capital will take care of the rest. But I do always like to highlight that, you know, there is some useful information here in our help center related to you know, the differences in how these business types are taxed within the system. So you can reference this within our help center if and when you need it. While we're here in the help center, I do want to also take a quick minute or two to um, you know, draw some attention here to something that I've already seen a handful of questions come in on which is the uh, qualified business income deduction under TCJA. So uh, there's a section of this article dedicated to that as well. You know, as a reminder, Right Capital does allow you to choose which tax law you want to use within the plan projections. Uh, and you know, currently under TCJA, there is a stipulation carved out for a uh, QBI deduction of 20% on the net business income for you know, these types of businesses. And there is actually a phase out on this deduction, you know, based on the income limits listed here for what are called uh, specified services businesses. So um, back in the data entry area, you may have noticed that there is a, a service income checkbox. So let's actually circle back to the client plan here uh, and take a quick look at that specific input. So I'm going to navigate back to the net worth area here, reopen uh, the business asset that we entered. Uh, and specifically, it's, it's this checkbox here, the service income checkbox. So uh, by default in right capital, you know, we assume that business assets are uh, you know, specified service businesses that are going to be subject to the QBI deduction phase out. So this service income box will be checked by default. But you know, if that's not the case, you can uncheck this box. And in that case, the business income will no longer be subject to that deduction phase out with those income limits. So uh, definitely something to be aware of here, you know, in terms of that service income checkbox, you know, under TCJ specifically. 
Uh, and you know, to wrap up the tax conversation here today, I do want to remind everyone that you can choose which tax law you're using in a given plan uh, by you know, navigating to the gear icon settings area in the upper right, and then clicking into the tax assumptions tab. And the first thing you'll find on this page is the tax law setting. So um, I'm currently using the default option in Right Capital, which assumes you know the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act you know in place uh, currently with an assumed sunset at the end of 2025. Um, so you know with this tax law in place, we would see that QBI deduction occurring through the end of 2025, and then it would actually stop from 2026 onward. So uh, you know that's certainly an option for you, but. Um, you know, with uh, some potential changes coming to, you know, some of these tax laws in the near future here, it's certainly important to be able to address some of those client questions related to, you know, what things might look like if we assume that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act maybe doesn't sunset within the projections. So, you know, you're able to play around with these different tax laws and you're able to see the different impacts that that will have on the client's plan as a whole here. So just wanted to make sure I pointed out where you can find that setting within the gear icon settings, tax assumptions tab. Great, so we're gonna take a, a quick pause here and just recap, you know, so far we've covered uh, data entry for clients with existing businesses. Um, we've looked at the cash flow impacts and where you can track all that information within the plan, as well as the tax impact of those, you know, business assets within the tax module. But um, the next thing I wanna cover here today is future business purchases. You know, maybe you have clients who you know, maybe don't own a business today, but plan to purchase one down the road. And you know, uh, there's a chance that maybe in the net worth section, you've tried to enter a, a future business here. And you know, maybe you've entered a future calendar year here for the year acquired and noticed that you know, Right Capital is not going to let that happen. Uh, and the reason for that is that the net worth section here in the profile is specifically for you know, current assets, assets that the clients already own. Um, so, you know, when it comes to future assets, in our particular case here, future business purchases, that's something you can account for within the goals area of the profile. So that's something that's added, you know, here in the goals section. And when it comes to business purchases, you'll want to click add goal in the upper right corner, and then hover your mouse over the asset purchase menu, and you'll find an option for future business purchase goals. So you know, very similar to adding existing business assets to the net worth, adding a future business purchase is going to open this data entry drawer for you on the right side of the screen. And the data entry process is very similar to what we just walked through in the net worth section. So, um, you know, of course, the major distinction being that this will be happening in the future. So we can start by entering, um, you know, rather than the current value and annual growth, we can start by entering the purchase price and annual appreciation, which you know, do essentially have the same impact in terms of you know, how those uh, you know, values are treated within the plan. Um, we can again enter the you know, annual income and annual distributions that we can expect from the business. Um, and you know, again, that annual growth percentage can be entered here as well. Um, and then you know, we see some uh, differences at this point in terms of these next few fields. You know, something that we can account for here when it comes to future businesses is, you know, uh, whether that client is planning to take out a loan to purchase the business. You know, if the client is maybe planning to buy the business outright, you can, of course, always enter a you know, down payment of 100%, but you know, we can also model other situations. You know, maybe these clients are planning to take out a 20% down payment and, uh, you know, maybe uh, take out a 15-year loan with, let's say, a 7% interest rate. So, you know, by entering that 20% down with that 15% term and 7% rate, Right Capital is going to automatically generate both a loan balance and a payment schedule within the cash flow projections, you know, based on these inputs. Um, so, you know, with this information entered here, you know, just like, uh, you know, existing business assets, we can also track all of this information related to future businesses within the retirement cash flows area as well. You know, a lot of it's located in the same areas that we looked at before, but there are a couple of important things uh, you know, that we didn't look at as it relates to future business purchases. So you know, first and foremost, when it comes to the year of purchase, we can see you know, that reflected in the goals tab here. It looks like I have that set to occur in 2024. So we can see you know, that $120,000, that 20% down payment occurring you know, as an outflow in the goals column of the cash flow summary here. 
if we wanted to track, uh, in this case, you know, the loan payments over time, we can click into the expenses column here, and then again into the debt column, and we can see you know, based on the you know, term and, and rate that we entered, we can see the you know, payments for that loan that the clients took out to purchase their business. And again, you know, we can track the um, the balance on both the business, but also on the loan uh, in the net worth table here in the cash flows. So uh, it, the new thing when it relates to you know, future purchase goals would be the uh, loan balance. And we can click into the other loans column here to see you know, that balance as it's being paid down over, uh, in this case, 15 years, that 15 year term. Great. So with that being said, uh, the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I want to make use of um, you know, taking a look at the retirement analysis area. And you know, when it comes to business purchases and business sales and so on in Right Capital, you know, the retirement analysis area is where we can start to you know, model proposals for clients and take a look at different what-if scenarios for clients and directly compare and contrast um, different options when it comes to business sales and business purchases. So, you know, the retirement analysis area is, you know, for those of you who might be unfamiliar, this is where we can see the probability of success for both the client's current plan based on all of the profile inputs, as well as a proposed plan. Uh, and when it comes to the proposal, you know, we can factor in uh, changes in the action items at the bottom of the page here and immediately see the impact of those changes on the client's proposal. So, uh, first, we'll take a look at business sales. You may notice in the lower right corner here, we can see our business asset that we entered into the net worth area. Um, and you know you have the flexibility here to you know, model a different year of sale for these existing assets and to see the impact that that might have. So if you'll remember, in the net worth area, we entered that this client's going to be selling this business in the year that Sadie retires, 2035. But Maybe we want to look at you know what their plan will look like if we sell that business in a different year. Or maybe we want that business to be sold at the end of Sadie's life, for instance, just as a quick example. We can make that change to the asset sale. We can click refresh in the lower right. And when we scroll back up to the top here, we can see the impact that that has in terms of a probability of success, median ending asset value, and also um, you know we can track uh, things like invested assets over time, uh, taxes, et cetera, you know, over the course of both projections. So in this example, it seems like you know the current plan in which we sell that asset in the year of retirement does have some benefit compared to you know, holding on to that asset until the end of this client's life. We can see the differences here in invested assets over the course of both of these projections. So you know there can certainly be value for setting up you know, A to B comparisons in relation to selling businesses at different times and you know, seeing the impact there. Of course, you know, in addition to you know, selling existing businesses, we can also use the retirement analysis section to model different scenarios when it comes to purchasing future businesses as well. So uh, let's take a look at a comparison in that regard as well. And for this, we're actually going to create a few new proposals here. So um, in addition to the you know, original current plan and the original proposed plan, you can always click the pencil and paper icon here to add new plans, new proposals to the client's retirement section. Um, so in this case, we're going to add two new plans here. And we'll say that for our first plan, we're going to see uh, a business purchase with, let's say, a 100% down payment. Um, and then we'll do uh, a second plan where maybe we model that 20% down payment with that 15-year term that we looked at a bit ago. So we can name each of these scenarios uh, to you know more easily distinguish between uh, each plan within the retirement area here. And then when we click OK in the lower right, we'll notice that you know on the current and proposed sides now in the retirement analysis, we can choose um, you know which plan we're editing on the left hand side and which plan we're comparing that to on the right hand side. So with these two new proposals, created here, the next thing to do is to add those business purchase goals to each proposal. And in order to do that, we can scroll down to the action items here at the bottom of the page. Um, of course, you know the action item screen here is where we can make adjustments to existing uh, variables feeding in from the profile. But you know, as a reminder, we can always click the edit button in the lower right 
and then add new items to a client's proposal, things that might not exist in the client's current plan. So maybe we want to set up that one what if scenario here. Now let's add that uh, business purchase goal to the proposal here and we'll create uh, you know, our, our first option. We'll say uh, in terms of the purchase price, that's $600,000. We'll have this purchase happen in 2025. Um, we'll enter some annual income and annual distributions here just uh, for a more, more fully fledged uh, you know, comparison. And then uh, the down payment. So for this first option, we're going to enter that 100% down, zero year term, 0% interest rate, and uh, click save here to add that uh, business purchase to the proposal here. So you know, we can see that here in the lower right, that's been added as a new item to the client's uh, action items. New action items are marked by this little green dot to the left of the name here. So you can uh, easily distinguish between you know, what's feeding in from the profile compared to what's been added here to the action items. Um, actually, maybe we want to rename this item as well to make it a little clearer You know what this uh, particular item is. So we'll call this one 100% down payment and then click save. Perfect. So we've added that proposal uh, to our 100% uh, down payment plan. Uh, next, we're going to add an, an additional uh, business purchase proposal here. So we're going to walk through those steps one more time. Click edit in the lower right, click add new items, and then you know find that business purchase goal card. I'm going to make sure to enter the, the same inputs here for the purchase price, for the year of purchase, as well as for the annual income and annual distributions. And then in terms of differences here, we're instead going to enter a 20% down payment with a 15-year term and a 7% loan rate. So um, these uh, two business purchases that we've added are identical except for the down payment term and rate. So again, click save in the lower right to add that to the action items here. Um, again, you know, maybe we want to rename this to make it a little more clear what each item is. Perfect. And then the last step in setting up this kind of comparison is to make sure that each respective item is only turned on for the proposal that we want it to be turned on for. So what that entails is you know, choosing one proposal on the left here and making sure that you know only the 100% down payment option in this case is turned on for this proposal. So for the 20% down payment, we want to turn this off by selecting never for this particular proposal. We'll click refresh to make that change. And then we're going to do a swap here and do the exact same thing for our 20% down payment proposal. So I'm going to swap 20% on the left and 100% on the right. And if we scroll back down, we can make sure that the 100% down payment option is turned off by selecting never. And then we have that 20% down option occurring in the same year. So once I click refresh in this case, you know, we have our comparison set up here in terms of, you know, which option might be the most beneficial for our clients. So we can see right away here off the bat, it seems like that 20% down payment option is resulting in a higher median ending asset value of almost a million dollars um, when it comes to uh, you know uh, the end of end of plan invested asset totals that we see you know for our Monte Carlo analysis here and we can also take a a more direct look at the comparison between these two proposals by taking a look at the comparison tab we can see that maybe by you know spreading out that uh, you know payment over time we're preserving the client's invested assets a bit you know, allowing those to grow uh, you know, over time and ultimately result in a higher ending asset total. Um, we can take a look at any other comparisons that we'd like here in terms of um, you know, taxes and overall net worth in the comparisons tab. Uh, and of course, you know, we'll see the impact of uh, all of that within the cash flows area as well. So um, you know, in the cash flows, you can toggle between your various proposals here in the upper right. So we can see uh, you know, the major differences between our two proposals that we've created. And we can see for our 100% down payment proposal, we can see that full, full $600,000 purchase occurring in 2025. We can see that that's requiring these clients to dip quite heavily into their assets to you know, fully fund that purchase goal here. Uh, and then you know, if we compare that to the 20% down payment option, uh, we'll see some differences here in terms of you know, the amount of the upfront purchase. Uh, we see a, an increase in expenses due to uh, you know, that debt payment over 15 years. 
Uh, but ultimately, you know, it seems like, you know, uh, not having to dip into their assets so heavily in 2025 is yielding benefit compared to, um, you know, the 100% down option. So, you know, once you have those proposals set up, you're able to take a look at all this information in the retirement analysis, um, you know, the visuals and the comparisons tab, and in the cash flows to help clients understand you know, why one option might be a better business decision than the other, and ultimately help them to make some informed decisions as it relates to future asset purchases and, of course, you know, asset sales as well.